Today, I'm talking about the Saucony Freedom 3. Seven point eight six miles, eight minutes, forty six seconds per mile, one hundred and thirty eight beats per minute for my recovery run today. Feeling pretty good about that heart rate number and those paces for today, especially considering the fact that it's been a really high mileage week for me, topping out today at over ninety miles for the week and in a week where I've had a lot of tempo miles. So feeling good that the paces are still pretty good for that heart rate feeling strong as I get ready for Boston. And today I was able to take the Freedom 3 for those recovery miles. And I actually ended up running a couple more miles than I was planning to because I was having so much fun in it. But before I get into my detailed thoughts on this shoe after just the first run for today, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that I purchased with my own money. No one sent it to me. No one's paying me to make this video or to wear the shoe. And no one's gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage before this video goes up on YouTube. Now with the disclosures out of the way, let's talk about the Saucony Freedom 3. Now this is a four millimeter heel drop shoe made with Power Run Plus, another in the Saucony lineup this year featuring that new midsole cushioning foam in it. And coming in at 8.4 ounces, I think the best way to think of this shoe is either a stripped down max cushion shoe or a daily trainer that's a little bit more plush. But in either event, it sits kind of in between those two categories, straddling or blurring the lines between max cushion and daily trainer. And for that, I think that's its intended purpose. And I think it does a really good job of it. This is my first time running in a Saucony Freedom shoe. I've not run in any of the previous Freedom before, but a lot of you guys have been strongly recommending the line to me me. So I was very glad to finally get it. I would have gotten to this review a lot sooner, except for the fact that I was waiting for this blackout colorway. All the Saucony shoes this year have been coming with this like black uh, upper with the gray midsole and I've just been <laughs> loving it. And so I had a pair of these shoes for like a month, but then I returned them because I've been waiting for this one to come out and I'm, I'm really glad that I did. Now, a lot of this shoe kind of looks familiar in terms of like the outsole pattern and looking at the midsole and even to a lot of aspects of the upper. Because while the Freedom 3 does have very distinctive styling usually on the sides and it's got these kind of ASICs like support wings in the heel cup, there's a lot of visual cues that I think are very familiar. So I'm thinking about this as a stripped down version of the Triumph 17. And we've got a lot of foam in the back here and all the parts that cup your ankle. Not quite as much as in the Triumph 17, but it's there and we've got nice, puffy, soft, stretchy laces on top here just to make sure nothing pinches or pulls down on the top of your foot too much. And then on the midsole, we've got a whole bunch of that really nice Power Run Plus midsole material. I believe it's all Power Run Plus midsole, just like in the Triumph 17, just shaped a little bit differently and dispersed a little bit differently. Not quite as thick, not quite as cushioned as that other Max Cushion shoe, but definitely feeling really good on the recovery run that I had for today. Now, the other thing is I do really like the Kinvara 11, which is another of the Power Run shoes that Saucony's put out this year. And so one of the ways I've been thinking about this shoe is like, this is like the Kinvara GT or Grand Touring version, where it runs and feels a lot like the Kinvara, but with a little bit of extra comfort touches and those things that remind me of the Triumph 17, those are the same comfort touches that I'm talking about. Now, in terms of the overall ride dynamics of the midsole itself and how it's different from the Triumph 17 and the Kinvar 11, I do find that I really enjoy Power Run Plus. I think it's a great material that they're working with. I've said it in all the other Saucony videos involving Power Run, uh, that I made this year, that Power Run Plus and the way it's being implemented by Saucony is just what Boost should have been like or should be like, uh, but it's what Boost isn't. That's what I'm getting from this. I mean, it kind of looks like Boost, it's shaped like Boost, it can be somewhat colored like Boost. Uh, so it has a lot of those similar limitations and so the, the comparisons I think are very natural. 
but I just like this a lot more, at least in the way that Saucony has been using it, than the way that Adidas has been using Boost in their shoes, at least for the most part. But it's not to say that this shoe doesn't have some kind of quirkiness to it. And I'm not sure if this is something that's been consistent with the Freedom line, but I had two main sensations when I was running in this shoe. The first is that in the midfoot, as I was striking, it felt almost a bit unstable. And so it felt kind of squishy in the forefoot where it felt like if I was stepping on something wrong, I could easily get uh, off balance. That being said, I was able to run over some very rocky terrain in the shoe without any issue. So I just, I'm not sure where that sensation is coming from. It was a little bit distracting in the beginning. Ultimately, I got used to it after the first couple of miles. But once that feeling went away, another feeling kind of took its place, or maybe that's what distracted me from the forefoot feeling. And that's something that I felt towards the inner part of the arch and back towards the heel. A lot of other Saucony shoes, and the main reason why I haven't reviewed like a ton of Saucony shoes, is that they like to insert a, like a hint of stability in all of their neutral shoes. It's a feature for most people. It's why a lot of people gravitate towards a brand. But for me, it's a reason to stay away from the brand. Those kinds of support features tend to make my arches hurt. And then eventually, if I keep running on those shoes enough, it'll start sending a little bit of pain up into my knee or both knees. I started to feel that around the five mile mark today with this shoe, right around like where the arch meets the heel and the back part of your foot. That's where I started to feel a little bit of fatigue at first. And then towards like mile six and a half, mile seven, like really towards the end on my right foot, my right knee started to feel not pain, but I just started to like notice that my knee was there. If that, if that kind of makes sense. So I'm thinking that that hint of stability, which I didn't find uh, in the Triumph 17, and I didn't really find in the Kinvar 11, I'm finding it here in the Freedom 3. So if that's a feature that you guys who have been loving Saucony's per year have been missing in some of this year's offering, this Freedom 3 is the shoe for you because I think it's back uh, and it's definitely noticeable here. What's odd is that in the Kinvara 11, they kind of designed it in a way that it shows that there's a hint of stability, even though I didn't feel it. Here in the Freedom 3, it doesn't really show that there's any of those kind of support features or structures, and yet I sensed it here. My only kind of clue that there was there is that right here on the part of the arch, right where I think there's some extra stiffness in the shoe, there's an extra thick piece of rubber. Now this outsole has a ton of, or basically almost full rubber coverage. There's two types of rubber here. So there's just something in here that makes it feel a little bit more stable, which I think for the way that the Freedom 3 has been positioned over the year makes a lot of sense. And I think that the people who have been running and loving the Freedom 3 are going to love this one as well well. If you've also been loving the way Saucony has been introducing Power Run Plus into its shoes, I think you're going to like it as well. With the caveat that if you're like me and that hint of stability is a little bit of a turnoff, you might not love the shoe, but you still have the Kinvar 11 and the Triumph 17 as really wonderful one-two punch alternatives that you can rotate in your closet and really enjoy both of those shoes. Nevertheless, all that being said, even with the hint of stability that I was in there, I did really enjoy my time running in this shoe. It was supposed to only be about a six mile run for today just to like barely get me over that 90 mile mark for the week. And then I decided, you know what, I'm gonna go to kind of my next turnaround point from where I run. I have a couple different turnaround points that give me different distances. I figured I'd run to the next one because I was just enjoying my day so much in this Freedom 3. So those are my thoughts so far on the Freedom 3 by Saucony with Power Run Plus. Let me in the comments uh, if you have any other questions. I'd love to talk to you guys about it more down there. Now, before I go for today, I do want to remind you guys about the charity run for this week. And this week, it's Stephanie Ryan, who's running the Boston Marathon and raising money for UNICEF, an organization that fights childhood malnourishment. I was happy to donate $70 of my own money to her fundraising efforts. And so many of you guys have joined in on the fundraising efforts as well. So I want to take a second to recognize you. So far, since Stephanie's been announced as the charity run of the week, we had Michael Sessler coming in again uh, with another donation. Kofuzi Run Club, again, with their $71 donation. So generous every week. Stephen DeGalant with $10, Kevin Scott with $10, Michael Mansfield coming in again with $10, Chris North again with $10, and Racing IG with $10. So already we're off to a really great start of helping Stephanie meet her fundraising goals. Thank you so much for donating, and thank you so much for showing everyone else what great work we can do together when we run together as a pack. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Yo, what's going on?